Dante Lightfoot. Negra. I 
theorem. One. Arithmetic drifted in her clouds. Newton chiseled worry into her face. Literature knitted her hair. Tangles of physics brushed freckled shoulders. Our children are in the back seats asking, are we there yet, during a road trip to a theme park where they all want to go. During the flopping moments, they will be their first time. They know what we are talking about, and they are living what we only laughed about. Cooties flew as far as a whisper. <laughs> I am the monster under the bed. I am the boogeyman hiding in the closet. I am Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Pennywise, and Pinhead. And no matter how many times you think you killed me or vanquished me, as soon as they make another sequel, I come right back. <laughs> I am Lex Luthor, the Joker. Brought you were eight. You came home from school and said you're lucky, Mom. You could always drink the good water. Searing pain, I tried to explain. Things are different now, but not enough. But that wasn't the beginning. You were only four when you brought home the lessons from the playground. You were quite hungry. Like dogs! They want to keep me muzzled! Because many of my pieces are missing from the puzzle. Some way my elevator didn't rise to the top. Nuts and both rushing in my biological clock. Somewhere down the line it just stopped ticking. I was going cuckoo as this piece was being written. Last night my brother called. We made promises. Don't leave me alone with our mother while she's dying, he said. Promise me you won't be her or her mother. Those blue lights, single lace, amber oil on bulbs, sleeping in ashes and urine. Cause I'm a woman, W-O-M-A-N. Now say it again, woman. Woman, invisible woman, woman the color of clay moves in shadows and works under the cover of night. At home. These days, most of what is beautiful is also disconcerting. You write at midnight in the 21st century, a decade after the towers fell, with you underground in the subway, taking your son to school. Mama says, you got to go to the head doctor. Uh -huh says all this brooding is going to kill you or her or somebody. All this kill in you and your temper short and you ready to fire cracker at the slightest. This ain't healthy, she said. Something inside of me. Remember that she didn't want you to be outside of this poem, 
you are a part of this home. And that if you don't live your life any better than this, you too will end like a poem ends. So we all must know that it goes weak, real cool, weak. You better be real strong with that yes. Yes. So as the title goes, it's We Real Cool, the Cool Players, Seven at the Golden Shuttle. And together we read, We Real Cool, We Left School, We Lurk Late, We Strike Straight, We Sing Sin, We Thin Chin, We Jazz June, We Die Soon. Y'all did very well. <laughs> now, just to bring you in the way back, in the first time, we have the first winner of the Gwendolyn Brooks Open Mic Award, and he's going to perform the poem that got him found. Years later, after we escaped you and the reservation, I was 17, strong and still very angry. And I was visiting there when I recognized you. I recognized you immediately, stumbling from another barroom door. I recognized you immediately, leaning upon the wall, swaying toward me. And I recognized you immediately, and that I was going to kill you. Because I remembered it all. I remembered all of it. The little boy standing on the straw-filled mattress, screaming with each click of your fist against his mother's jaw. The little boy with your boot bottomed against his neck, smashing his face into the dirt floor. The little boy trying, really trying, not to let you see him cry. The little boy covering his head, trying not to listen to the no, 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 daddies from his big sister, the little boy begging God, 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 just to take you away and then promising to do it himself, myself, someday. And I recognized you as you slipped, as my heart shriveled, and I recognized you as you fell and my hands balled in the fists, and I recognized myself rushing to you, yanking you up by the collar, burying my teeth ready to break you in half when I recognized that you were too limp, that you were too weak, that you were too broken to break. And so I carried you across the street into the warmth of a late night laundromat, propped you up in a chair, daubed your spinny mouth with my sleeve, and I went back outside and I stood 17, strong and still very angry, and I tried I really try not to cry. Thanks so much. Nora, would you please come on up here? Yes. This is Nora Brooks Blake. demonstrates and promotes the work of Gwendolyn Brooks in the 21st century. And Ms. Blakely also teaches the very, very, very lucky youth at DuSable Leadership Academy, the wonderful art of theater. First, let me say I totally understand the last thing you want to hear right now is anything except the name of the song. I totally get that. However, I was asked to say something, so I will go ahead and say something. Um, but first, I want to do this. This is a poem by uh, my mother. Uh, it's called Patrick Billy of Cabrini Green. And I wanted to dedicate it to, well, first of all, the young man who died on July 4th and was shot by the police was a student of mine. And so, I wanted to dedicate this poem to Christian Green, to Trayvon Martin, and the children of Chicago who were but aren't. 
what is devout is never to forget. Never to shelve the value and the beauty. Patrick, vivid, valid, lyrical, we cannot reach, we cannot touch. The radiant richness that was Patrick cannot be reached again, cannot be hugged, cannot be visited. What is devout is never to forget that he was with us for a little while. Our splendor, our creative spirit, our sparkling contribution, our flash of influence interrupted, our interrupted man. Gears and say that Mama gave and gave and gave all kinds of giving. And here are three. Uh, one, she was concerned about the teens in the 70s on our block and their lack of interest and their lack of interest in their history and their future. So she created a club for them, sent them places, including some of them to Ghana, all expenses paid by her. There, were, there was a school that she went to, because she went to schools all the time. And so she went to this elementary school of 400 students. And she read for them. And then she signed an autograph for every last one of the 400 students. And the Illinois Poet Laureate Awards, the Illinois Poet Laureate Awards were created by her because the governor at the time, when he made her, Otto Kerner, when he made her the Poet Laureate, she said, well, what are my responsibilities? And she said, and he said, your responsibilities are commensurate with your pay, which was nothing. <laughs> so she created the Illinois Poet Laureate Awards. And for 30 plus years, she gave out between 20 to 70 awards each year to elementary school and high school students, 50 to $100 each award. All of it. She read every poem, only her, and she paid the prizes, the telegrams, the stamps, everything was paid out of her pocket. All kinds of giving. But tonight, as I listened to the heart and the humor and the punches and the pathos, I thought that she would be proud of how much you give to.
And I was able to be a part of this, uh, this team that was breaking voices, the like, youth uh, national poetry slam. And uh, we performed this piece called Lost Count, a love story. Um, it was on HBO, it was on the final stage there. Um, and since then, I've created a, a, a small book scholarship in the name of that piece yeah. um, that like, encourages, has, has you encouraged to think about like, ways in which we can, we can make, we can stop youth violence um, in the city. Um, it's open to like CPS uh, seniors, graduating seniors. Um, so the rest is going to go to that. And uh, yeah, if you know anybody who's going to graduate next year, tell them I'll have you. <laughs>